Hello again, I am Blonty. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be looking at my brand new favouritest camera ever in the universe. Ever. It's this guy. It's the teeny weeny Pentax Q. And you'd be smart not to judge it by its almost preposterously diminutive scale. Think of it like Yoda. Small package, big power, and surprisingly fun. The Pentax Q, believe it or not, is actually an interchangeable lens system camera. And it's also, by a wide margin, the smallest system camera out there. And if you take into account the size of the battery and the SD card, you'll wonder where the bloody hell everything else is supposed to fit. As you may imagine, the size, or rather lack of size, means that the imaging sensor has to be much smaller than the other system cameras out there. And it is. But as we discovered with great clarity in my recent review of the Nikon V1, these days sensor technology is making bigness matter less than it used to when it comes to image quality. And the little sensor in here, despite being the same size as that found in many bog-standard point-and-shoot compacts, is actually remarkably capable. And since the first day I picked it up, I had a very strong suspicion that it's one of Sony's superb Exmor R line of sensors. It'll spin out 12.4 megapixels, and the image quality is truly something that will surprise you. A small sensor also means the lenses don't have to be big either, so they too are very tiny. The kit lens is a standard prime, good for general purpose shooting and portraits in particular. The focal length is a 35mm equivalent of 47mm. It's also very fast with an aperture of just f1.9. Next up, if you get the twin lens kit, which I highly recommend by the way, you'll get a 3x zoom lens, which is a nicely flexible 35mm equivalent range of 27-23mm at f2.8 to f4.5. It makes a great walking around lens, and both of these are autofocus lenses built to high standards. Third in the range is an equivalent 17.5 manual focus fisheye lens with a 160 degree field of view and which I absolutely adore to bits. It's a lot of fun to shoot with and I've taken some of my favourite shots on the queue with it. The final two lenses in the launch lineup are what Pentax call toy lenses. This means that they're manual focus, fixed aperture and they kind of quirky but also quite inexpensive. One's a 100mm equivalent telephoto, the other is a 35mm equivalent wide angle. They aren't very impressive lenses, in fact they can be a little bit soft, but they can certainly be a chunk of fun if you're into that toy camera aesthetic. If you've used Pentax DSLRs, you'll be familiar with the menu system in place here. If not, what you'll find is one of the cleanest, most sensible menu layouts available on a camera, and a very good set of options and features. It's all color-coded, it's all nice and quick to respond, and it's very sensibly laid out. You also might expect a camera this small, with so many manual controls and interchangeable lens system, might be too small to comfortably hold and use. Wrong again! Even with my big bloke mitts, it felt comfortable to use all of the time, and somehow, almost impossibly, those small buttons never ever even made me think of the word clumsy. The design is clearly inspired by classic cameras gone by, but without feeling like it's pandering to this stupid hipster wannabe crowd. The body is cast from magnesium alloy, just like the high-end DSLRs, so it's very light and very strong. The main dials and buttons are all solid metal too. So instead of being a tryhard attempting to ape some of the old-school styling, it's a respectful tip of the hat, a graceful tribute. And I love it. It's a beautifully tactile experience to use it. You feel absolutely involved in its operation, a feeling that is sometimes missing from some cameras today. The best way to describe it that I've come across is it feels like a proper photographer's tool instead of an electronic gadget. My very favorite hardware feature, though, 
is the customizable quick dial on the front. It has five positions, off, one, two, three, four, and you have the ability to customize what each of these positions do. You can set smart filters for certain effects like cross-processing or black and white or toy camera. Maybe you just want some simple color filters in there, or you can use it to swap around the aspect ratio you're shooting in. What I do is use it to flick to some customized filters I've modified to my own personal tastes, a mix of effect filters with custom color grades. So that's the hardware basics, so now let's take a look at what this little beastie actually does. One of the first things that hit me on day one was just how well the details came through. The Q generates a very crisp, very clean image with dynamic range that would put even some DSLRs from recent years to shame. And of course you can shoot in RAW, so you can squeeze even more dynamic range from it than you're seeing in these JPEGs from the camera. The 25-point autofocus system isn't lightning fast, but it never felt slow either. It's kind of average, really, and the sensor-based shake reduction worked very nicely. The two autofocus lenses are electronically connected, so you'll be using a fly-by-wire type control ring when you're in manual focus mode with them. The focus rings on all of the lenses feel a bit, well cheap, which is sad when everything else feels so high grade. They're okay, but not great. They did at least work flawlessly. With both of the auto lenses and the manual lenses, the focusing is quite quick. That is, you don't have to turn the lens ring very far to go from close to distant focus. It initially felt too quick, but once I got used to it, I had no problem with control and fine adjustment of focus. You do have the ability to jump into a 2 times or 4 times magnified view for manual focus with one click of a button to help you out, which worked quite well, but sometimes I wish there was a higher level of magnification. Battery life doesn't suck, but it will not blow you away either. If you're not using flash, you can expect somewhere in the order of 250 plus shots on a single charge. And as with all my cameras, I've picked up a spare battery. And with the Q, having a backup is highly recommended. Because it's so much fun to shoot with, if your battery stops you before you're ready to stop shooting, it may be quite upsetting. One of the only things about the Q that did disappoint me is the screen. Sure, it's bright and sharp and pretty wonderful in many ways, but in direct sunlight, you're going to have some trouble. Luckily, being so small and light means you can easily operate the camera with one hand and use the other to shield the screen from the very brightest of glare from the sun. But still, it was a bit of a bummer in an otherwise superb bit of hardware. Wonderfully though, it does feature a built-in ND filter. For those who need a hint, ND stands for neutral density. It's a way of cutting down the light coming in so you can use wider apertures and slower shutter speeds in bright conditions. Usually it's a lens attachment, something you screw on the front, but some cameras have the ability built in, and that's a really good thing. And one of the reasons you want to do that is to get pretty effects like these, which would normally be impossible to do in bright daylight. As I mentioned before, one of the best things about this combination of this level of performance and this diminutive size means you can carry the camera around and all five lenses that launch with it in a single cargo pocket. You simply can't do that with any other camera, at least not without having a pocket the size of a backpack and the world's strongest belt to stop your pants from being dragged down to your ankles. It's a wonderfully freeing thing to carry around that much flexibility and not need the encumbrance of even a small camera bag. It truly is a wonderful thing to be able to do. It's amazing what a difference it can make. The Q will also shoot video of course. What may surprise you though is that the video it takes is full HD 1080p. The video it sucks in has good sharpness, good color and dynamic range. The microphones work pretty well. Again they're built into the camera so they're not gonna blow you away but they're surprisingly good for what they are, little pinholes. But the Q can display a tendency to expose your hunt a bit roughly and you're really going to want to turn off the sensor based stabilization for video. It works well for stills but in video mode it simply doesn't work properly in its current implementation. This may be something they can fix with a firmware update but for right now it's horrible. It can cause the video to stutter and jump significantly during pans or if something comes into frame suddenly. Turn it off and be mindful of your conditions and you will get very usable and quite pleasant 1080p footage. What you're really going to love though is the two different interval shooting modes. That's time lapse to you and me. 
You've got two ways to go about it. You can get the queue to do all of the work for you. You can tell it to snap off frames at a selectable interval for a set time and it will build a movie file for you automatically in camera, which is quick, easy and effective. But you can also use the intervalometer to shoot a series of full resolution still images in the same way. But this time it's up to you to put them together in a movie on the computer. Doing it this way gives you way more detail and resolution to play with so you can do nifty post processing tricks like zooming in or out. A little more work, but you get the payoff. Shooting with the little Pentax Q is amazing fun. I've shot with a lot of cameras over the years, a lot of reviewed as well of course, but none of them has felt as fun to use as the Pentax Q. It's it's a it's a very strange thing to try and wrap a sentence around, but there's something about it that taps into a primal part of my brain and just unleashes a feeling of playfulness, of experimentation, of creativity, of a, a desire to play. A lot like the Nikon V1 I recently reviewed. When you look at it on the paper, the little Pentax Q seems a little bit weird, a little bit off, and some of the less open-minded photo freaks out there may, in fact, be compelled to shout, what the hell were they thinking? But again, just like the Nikon V1, once you actually pick up and start shooting with the Pentax, you, everything suddenly becomes clear, and you have a, oh, moment. And all of those ignorant preconceived notions suddenly poof, explode and vanish into a fine mist of idiotic fantasy. Pentax is, of course, a Japanese company, and the Pentax Q feels very Japanese. It's measured, it's careful, and, of course, small. Now, of course, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. It's not meant to be. But for those of us who see it for what it really is, and for those of us it, it speaks to, it's a wonderful thing. It's a fun thing. It's a brilliant little bit of kit. It's a tiny, deceptively powerful image-making machine that intravenously feeds pure, uncut fun right to the pleasure centers of my brain. So if you're a photography enthusiast who can see past the details on a spec sheet and to what a camera can actually provide you in your photographic adventuring, then give the Pentax Q a look. Do yourself a favor, don't be a gear snob and just say, well, it's got a tiny sensor the size of a compact camera. Why would I want that? Give the bloody thing a go. I doubt many of you will be disappointed once you use it. I am Blunty. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Judge me not by my size. Look, I'm so small to you. <laughs> Still working on the Yoda.